Hey, what's up, my guys, and welcome back to Gearblox. Today, instead of looking at a creation, we're instead going to create a tutorial. This one being about engines and really simple setups. We're going to be going over single cylinders, inline two, and inline four. These are probably the easiest engines you can build and get working in the game and can honestly suit your needs for the majority of things. So, simply getting started, you just need a place to put your engine, some sort of block. This will come into need when you come to the drive shaft, because this does need to be mounted to a solid object, and make sure it is set to rotate. Now this will work for the small or the large engines here. And once you bring this beam up, attaching your cylinder to it, going into your third menu, and you have your piston. From there, just having a head on top. And then take here. And you could, of course, pipe out an exhaust if you'd like to. For now, I'm just going to put a quick little piece here. And we can call this the exhaust. Now, you do need a way to get this engine actually started. You could easily do a hand crank, or you could also just do a starter. For this, I'm actually going to show a bit of both of those. So, if we grab our gear, axle, and let's get this mounted up top. And a large gear, because we have to turn the high torque of a hand crank into a high speed for the engine. Because you need to get the engine up to about 300 RPMs for it to start. And that means we can now attach our wheel. And let's double check a few things. This is pivoting. This is pivoting. This is connected. And so this doesn't fall out of the sky put a quick pin in it. Set this to start and turn everything on. And set our engine throttle to whatever throttle you'd like. If you're putting this into a car, you'd likely set this throttle to W. Now, as we start to crank this, the engine is not starting and I'm not surprised. What you need to do is actually look at the driven crank, which is the heart of the engine, and notice in the bottom right it is moving in a negative direction. Two things you could do for this. One, you could invert this direction, which would spin the engine the opposite way, and it starts. Or, you could also invert this direction and get it to start. Please note, in some applications, you may actually need the engine to rotate in a specific direction. So, some situations you will have to rotate the starter rather than the engine, and you may also have to add some gearing onto the engine to reverse direction in certain situations. Um, like when I did my bike recently, I actually needed the engine to rotate a specific direction for the sake of its flywheel being a part of the stabilizer. Something to keep in mind. All right, so that's a hand crank, really easy. And then let's do a starter motor, which is likely what you're going to use in the majority of your builds. One thing we can do is instead of using an actual gear here, if we're already going to attach this to a transmission, we can use one of the clutch gears, either the centrifugal gear, which is what I usually use, or you could have a normal clutch ring as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and grab the gear for our little starter here. Turn this on, set this to start G. Now, in this case, the starter is already meshed, which we don't want. If we hit invert solenoid, it'll pop this out. If you don't have invert solenoid on, it'll stay like this and then pop out when it starts. 
invert solenoid it starts popped out and brings in when it starts and this is a negative so we can invert this there we go and with our throttle on F We have a single cylinder engine working just fine. Now up here, some things you can change. If you'd like to go for a higher RPM, you can set this higher. If you'd like a bit more power, set the peak volumetric. I wouldn't really touch Lambda. Exhaust is more so for the visual effects if you want more smoke coming out of the engine or if you want less smoke coming out of the engine. That's really all this slider does. And then the peak RPM I'm not going to go into too detailed, but it's essentially at what RPM you are getting your peak efficiency, where you're getting the most power put out. Now, if you set this highest, you'll get the best overall power coming out of the engine. However, if you're, say, accelerating, you'll have this lower to work with your transmission as well. This is one that takes a bit of balancing and a bit of work with transmissions to get fully functioning. So I'm going to leave it at 2,500. Now, to take the single cylinder and turn it into a inline two is really, really easy. Just grabbing another one of these crankshafts, popping this on, and you're actually going to leave this in the same spot as the other one. In the air intake, we can just flip around, and it'll fit just fine. You could also, if you'd like, attach these with some small pipes to have just a single air intake. There is some benefit to having multiple air intakes, but it's not too noticeable in my opinion. So if you want it to look nicer, you can connect it quite easily. And just because we'll do the same for exhaust. The only major difference with this is we will go into our behavior and set the firing order to two. And I've made a mistake. I forgot to hook up my actual crank. And there we go. Simple in line two. Now, the inline four is more of the same, essentially, except for when we actually build this out, we are going to flip two of these. Technically doesn't matter which two we are. When it comes to a real life engine, you would usually have the front and back and then the two in the center. But in this case, it's a video game and it doesn't matter that much. So we're just gonna have these back two flipped 180. Extend our exhaust, extend our intake. And then for timing, we're going to have one of the crankshafts set to zero, one of the crankshafts set to 180, the other crankshaft set to zero, and then the other set to 180. So one, two, three, four. Make sure these are all hooked up and run the starter. And we have a fully functioning inline four. Now some add-ons and things you can do with this. If you're planning to run this in the actual energy consumption turned on, there's a few things you will need. You're going to need an actual fuel tank. You could really put this wherever you'd like. And then hook this up here to all of the orange pieces. And then we will also need a battery. Or the actual starter. 
So we can grab the starter motor here. And we will need some sort of power output due to needing an alternator. Now we can actually just pull it off of this gear directly, but if you'd like to have the other side of the engine having output, you have two options. You could replace this crank with one of these front engine cranks and it would have an attachment point to it, or you can just use one of these nose pieces. From there, having a belt. Actually, I'm going to do this because I want to put a fan on here just for the fun of it. And then we'll have a small pulley. And then our electrical system, grabbing the alternator. We're going to have to bring this out just a bit. So we have room for it. There we go. So for our second pulley to be put onto. Connect these up, make sure everything's connected. Oh, fuel got disconnected somehow. And then connect to this to here. Make sure the alternator is turned on and we are producing power in the bottom right. Now, in this case, with how this engine is set up, if you were going to attach a transmission to it, you'd simply click in here to the back. And here is where your power output would be. Oh, we snapped the belt with such a high RPM. <laughs> Let's bring this pulley down just a little bit in size so we don't go that fast with it. There we go. And now if we'd like to just go and turn on power consumption. We have everything that we need. So this is just a simple look at single cylinders, inline twos, and inline fours. They're genuinely not that hard to build. The biggest thing you need to keep in mind is ensuring that the actual driven crankshaft is going the right direction. It should always be in a positive RPM. However, the actual rotation of that can be switched through here and through changing your starter. So with that being said, I'm going to end it out here. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.